It's actually happening. Sell everything. This is garbage. It's awful. Do not hold any stocks. Definitely don't buy AMC or GME because they are going to go to zero. Everything's terrible. At least Nvidia is holding up and I'm not too convinced at this point. Now I can be convinced going into tomorrow, but I'm going to need some things to confirm. As of right now, we are not seeing confirmations of some signals, but it looks like we could have some stuff turn up tomorrow and we do get GDP. We still have GDP, so do not freak out. And the funniest part about today is for days now, I have been saying how the insiders have been selling. And what do we see on this story right here for NVIDIA? We see uh oh, this right here, insider sold shares worth 21.5 million according to recent SEC filing. So all the people telling me coming into my live chat saying the insiders are not selling NVIDIA. There you go. Now we're going to get into some technical analysis for the spy cues, Apple, Tesla, Amazon, NVIDIA, AMD and Meta going forward. And we're also going to look at AMC and GameStop. OK, let's just get right into it and go with the spy because we are seeing some signals that, yes, it does look like the direction is down. But we have a lot of time left in the week and that post market is below our weekly expected move. So the very first thing I wanted to point out here was something very subtle, but we have not even crossed over on this MACD yet. And I am seeing something very interesting over on XLU. Now this could change. This could change going into tomorrow. That's what I'm saying. All I'm saying is I need a little bit more price action to see which way this market is actually going to go. As of right now, you would say negative trend. So it is going down, right? But what do we want to pay attention to? XLU. XLU Utilities is our crash signal that we notified you about all the way up here. And now we're seeing that downturn. And what do I think is going to happen? Well, I think XLU needs to make the real crash signal that it's made the last two or three times in this overall move. So what do I see here? I see a 30 minute divergence that has not confirmed in any way. It has not gone positive, but something about GDP tomorrow could be pretty big. It is supposed to come in a little bit lower. So um, real quick, we are actually going to touch on yields because someone was stating how, you know, uh, the trade setup I gave for IWM, it looks very, very good. And that's on, over on Patreon. But what is happening with these yields? Someone commented right away and said, well, these yields going higher is going to be very, very bad for IWM. So let's go look at what could bring down these yields tomorrow. Okay, so with those yields tomorrow morning at 730 a.m., we do get the GDP growth rate. And you're going to notice that is supposed to be the previous was 3.4 and it is supposed to come in lower. The funny thing about it coming in this low, if it does, it is still a positive number, which means growth, which means people can see it as still positive. But they also could see it as positive because if this number is coming down from the previous, that might cause the 10 year yield to start to drop further down, maybe just reconnecting with the five day moving average. Now, I'm not saying that has to happen. We still want to pay attention to the exact reaction to that, right? We want to pay attention to the reaction of the number that comes out. Hell, we could end up with a higher GDP with how inflation is. So we're just paying attention to this because if the GDP does come in lower, that technically would mean that there is a deflationary thing happening, right? We're coming down, growth is slowing, so these yields would not have to go higher, and this actually could pull back, and it could be seen as good news from the market. So am I convinced that this market is going to tear down? I think it would be way too easy. I think it would be way, way too easy for this to just be, oh, we're gonna crash because we cross over on this MACD tomorrow, right, on the daily scale for the SPY. So I think it's gonna be more complicated than that, so let's get into this analysis for the SPY moving forward. Uh, what do we notice here? Well, we are in a negative trend. Okay. We, we were able to turn over right here. This said the direction was down. And I told you guys, it was very hard for me to hold my position right here, but my risk management told me to hold my uh, volatility position because there was going to be some kind of drop. And it told me not to get out of that position right here. My risk management, I follow it to a T. It was very difficult. I literally put my hands up in real life and I said, just don't hit the sell button because something is fishy about this and your risk management might save you. And it did. The next day I did see this gap down. I was able to make good money today and I'm very, very happy about that. So the risk management portion of the course coming in handy for myself there, of course is $100 right now. So what are we noticing? We go down into negative territory, okay? We are in negative territory, so we are seeing negativity. Now we move sideways and you have to say for the SPY, very interesting that we just drop and we do nothing all day. And I think this is a problem with market makers and their liquidity right now, uh, maybe due to the AMC and GME problem because they're having to short that thing into the ground. They are trying their best to do it. And uh, if you need more info on that, just go look all over the internet. Uh, maybe I can put out some sources, but 
This right here, what could happen? Well, let's just talk about some moves here. If this can curl up and go positive, if that GDP comes out, I know that we're gapping down, but the thing is, if we gap down, we're outside of that weekly expected move, and maybe this turns into some kind of divergence, right? Maybe this turns into some kind of divergence. Remember, they've ripped it away up here. They've ripped it away over here. They made you go sideways here. This was a trap. This was a trap. This was a trap. This was a trap. But the whole month has been traps left and right. So are they really going to make it this simple? Curling over on a daily MACD for the SPY means we crash? I don't think so. I think it'll be more complicated than that. But I'll pay attention to tomorrow once I see some more price action. Right now, we need some levels to pay attention to for tomorrow. 528.80 to the upside, and we have 523.40 to the downside. So if that downside is going to remain, we're not going to get saved by GDP, well, I would pay attention to 523.40, but it would make total sense to break down from this. Remember, this can escalate outside of those weekly expected moves, but just be careful if this turns back around because there could be some kind of divergence right when you were convinced that this is all over. Now, the main thing we were saying to pay attention to for the SPY and the Qs didn't happen here. But first, let's get you those daily expected moves. That would be 459.91 to the upside. The daily expected moves just slowly getting wider, slowly getting wider, and 452.97 to the downside. Remember, this is what the options market has calculated in. And if we go into the shorter time frame, remember today, we came outside of that move, we moved back up in it, and then we used the bottom of it, and then we slightly, just barely broke down beneath it at the end of the day, just barely beneath it. So a uh, very good range to pay attention to there. It caught this little bounce, you know, and then we reacted off it. So if they're going to save the market here, then why would it, unless so we get a bunch of calls coming in, but the put call ratio is not looking that good um, as far as the call side, retail taking a bunch of calls. I don't think that's the case, but right now the direction is down on the 30 minute. You can see us, we were able to get into negative territory. That's a big deal. So the direction is down and we'll have to see what happens, but I can pay attention to 452.97. Okay, 452.97. Now the signal for upside has not yet confirmed. It hasn't confirmed yet, okay? So we we never had guaranteed upside for the Qs ever in this. Do you see? There's no green bar on the histogram, okay? So the, the reason I'm saying that we still could turn up is if this is some kind of fake out and this just goes like this, now you've beaten down to a cheaper price. More buyers can step in and you can see a solid move maybe going into early next week and we can pay attention to the weekly expected moves for next week. So I'm still paying attention to this. The way up would be the two hour crosses up. Right now, it looks like that direction is going to be down, but if this just remains up here in positive territory, it's technically going to be in a positive trend moving forward. So um, mainly just paying attention if things are able to curl over on the daily as well. And what am I noticing here? The cues are a little bit further away from crossing than the SPY. So I'm not necessarily fully convinced. Maybe tomorrow can change my mind. You can see my mind change tomorrow live in the morning as we do watch stocks together every single morning of the week. One interesting thing here was Apple was able to curl over on its daily MACD. Very, very interesting. It was able to curl over on its MACD, but it did not lose the five-day moving average. We're seeing some pressure here. This is very hard um, to trade in right now, and it's nice to just be patient and look for a very good setup like I did with AMD. I took the AMD setup. Um, it wasn't the best setup, but I'm skilled enough to do that one. I didn't want to put it on Patreon because it overall wasn't the perfect setup, so I had to manage it close and that one ended up paying off for me very very good there so one thing to note here um, we talked about a 30 minute divergence forming right here for Apple right here for Apple now the weekly expected moves still above us and you can get those over on patreon but um, this right here we talked about it I kind of joked about it. I was like it'd be funny if we made like a little 30 minute divergence like this instead of the two hour one up here and what do we notice we actually did make that divergence like we did so very interesting that Apple's making the slight downward move on the MACD slight downward move on the RSI at the same time so if this starts to go negative then that's going to roll over that two hour that two hours not going to be able to cross it rolled up and rolled right back down so that already has rolled it down so the direction for the two hour right now still in positive territory but if that goes negative yeah we can see a pretty significant drop here so we'll pay attention to this live but uh was this the best trade setup i mean if you really paid attention to this it was good but going into a big event like gdp i'd be very careful tesla is one that as of right now you would say is in a 30 minute positive trend now one thing i did notice on tesla i did 
look into this because someone was saying four hour divergence down here. This is very important, right? Left head, right shoulder. If we break below, um, I would say 173.29. If we can close below that, you might get something like this to go on and you will continue that negative trend if the 30 minute MACD is able to roll over. Um, the only thing I was paying attention to was I was trying to find some kind of set up here. I really was. And overall, I kind of found this area here and I thought, you know, this looks almost like divergence, but it's just not, but it was able to go positive. So in the current moment, you do have a 15 minute that has not crossed over yet. It's in positive territory. I know the last bar looks ugly, but it's in positive territory. Now, if we're going to see bad news and that just gaps below here, it's probably game over. It's probably game over, uh, but we just really want to pay attention to if this daily is able to go into negative territory as that has rolled over as well. So it does not look pretty, but it just seems a little too easy to me. It seems a little too easy. So maybe we do get some kind of pullback and then we go back up to the highs later on because I, I just highly doubt one crossing over of the MACD on the SPY on a daily and the in Tesla on the daily and Apple on the other charts. It's just, it just seems too easy to me and they've been trying to trick us so much that why would they make it so easy all of a sudden? Now, Amazon, this was a great setup. You had a pretty dang good setup here that could roll up the daily, but it didn't do so yet. So you're still in positive territory. So still a positive trend on the daily scale. What do we notice here on the two hour? Well, you did have some like subtle divergence on the RSI, not necessarily showing up on the MACD at the same time. So we shouldn't expect that daily to really roll up. But the 30 minute was the play here. And what are we noticing? 30 minutes starting to roll over. So 30 minute, you see this good bounce. What do we do? We see a triple divergence, maybe even quadruple divergence down here. Get into that move and boom, you see a nice bounce here from 181.50 all the way back up to uh, about 184. Solid bounce, but now we're starting to curl down. So we have to see, is this going to roll over and go negative? As of right now, it looks like a lot of stocks are dropping. But what if that GDP shakes things up? That's all I'm worried about at this point. I think that something fishy is going on here. We've seen trap after trap after trap. Why would they make a move outside of the weekly expected move on Thursday morning when we have a little bit more time to come back into that range? It just seems a little fishy to me, but I could be proven wrong and I look forward to watching those stocks in the morning with you guys to see uh, if I'm just completely wrong on this and that's perfectly fine with me. I know that there is downside potential because of XLU. I still have a volatility play in the books there. It just hasn't, I don't have four positions and I only have two. I sold two of those today. So we'll find out what's going to happen with this, but right now 30 minute pointing down and the two hour not necessarily looking too strong as well for Amazon. Remember, this is far away from that center line. So we overall said a lower high is very likely here. And maybe this one right here is just going to continue that negative trend right now. We'll look for any signals in the future for Amazon. NVIDIA, we had people come in and talk about NVIDIA and say, what do you mean the insiders are selling? The insiders are not selling. Click this button right here and they just posted an insider is selling. We're seeing this drop off. And I think that's a big thing going on right now. Uh, what do I notice here though? 30 minute is beating down to that center line. It hasn't gone negative yet. We haven't even gone, we haven't even gotten downward price action really. We got this fake out right here, which actually reacted off the top of the weekly expected move. Remember we broke through that weekly expected move. Now we tested the top of it. Now we move a little bit higher, but as long as retail keeps trying to short this, it gives them more fuel to just make it push up and make money and make money and make money. They're just stealing from the shorters here and that's perfectly fine. I mean, that's just how the market is manipulated at this point. Everything that's being implemented with T1 is going to make that a little bit harder with the CAT system going to make that a little bit harder. But until we see what actually happens with all that, um, they could probably just keep doing what they're doing. It seems like they're just doing what they've always done. So we're paying attention to the 30 minute. Can that get close to the center line and curl up one more time? Boom, we could see an upward move if that happens. Okay, so if this can get some kind of minor pullback and then start to head up, or maybe it just starts to head up now because really this thing hasn't pulled back almost at all. You got one right here and then now what? You wanna count this as a pullback, I guess. You can, but the main thing I'm paying attention to is when this two hour curls over. I think once this two hour curls over, we're actually going to see a more meaningful pullback for Nvidia. Uh, do I believe this is the absolute top? I would be more convinced if the two hour beat down to that center line and we pop back up and then we got some kind of double top. I'd be very convinced of something like this setup, but as of right now, it seems too easy for everything.
now AMD, this is that trade that I did end up taking. Now I told you I was going to take a real, you know, position size that I would take if we made some kind of setup up here that we talk about like on the course. So I was gonna do this with you guys. I ended up getting into this position late uh, yesterday, right around this area to the short side. And that was just because we have two hour divergence up here. This is what I was looking for the whole time. Now that has confirmed, but I'm still not going to get back in this move. I'm still not fully convinced this is over. I think that the 30 minute does still have the opportunity. Look how close it is to the center line. So by managing this trade, I pretty much just said, hey, I'm taking money quickly. They're trapping people a lot. So I didn't want that to just buy right back up and then take the position later. As of right now, that crossed down. I held it for a few, for like 30 to 30 minutes to an hour this morning. Boom, it goes down. I think I sold around 166. Now we're seeing a bounce up. Okay, so the 30 minute, if this thing curls up, it's right next to positive territory. We're off to the races again, and maybe I can take this trade with this signal. But as of right now, we're starting to curl down. So I really wanted to dig into AMD for you, show you a five minute. Actually, I wanted to show you a 15 minute, my bad. The 15 minute here, was never able to curl back over. It was never really confirming more downside. Now you're getting that downside now, but we do get GDP in the morning. So no real confirmation of downside. If we are going to see some kind of downward price action tomorrow, what if just some kind of subtle 15 minute divergence forms? I highly encourage you to pay attention to that, especially if we head down towards our weekly expected move and we create that signal around the weekly expected move. That seems a little bit low. I think 160.83 is the level to pay attention to for AMD, paying attention to any kind of divergence down here for some kind of trap. Meta has been trying to turn up on the 30 minute. This was really your bullish signal was if this 30 minute can turn up into positive territory. Notice it tries, it tries, it tried right here a little bit, right, right here, and it just couldn't do it. So if that moment's gonna happen now, right when everyone thinks the direction is down as they go to sleep tonight and then they wake up and the stock market's higher, I think that would be more of the trap that would really screw people over. I just, I feel like this is a little too easy. I'm fine with it being easy because I have volatility play still in there. I have two positions on volatility. So I'm perfectly fine with a downward price action, but I'm just not fully convinced, okay? So if this 30 minute curls up, that would mean positive trend, positive move. Now the two hour here, it's not curled down and that's why I'm talking about some of the signals have not confirmed and we need more price action. Yes, we have a head and shoulders. Yes, we have the left, we have the head, we have the right shoulder, and we have a divergence across the way here, right? We have a divergence here and here. So you do have that multiple point divergence, but I'm still not fully convinced why this hasn't crossed over on that MACD. So I know a lot of people would front run this and then it would cross and then that would go back up, but they didn't even cross it at the end of the day. So my signals would tell me be patient here. And even though you know the market's closed right now, I'm sticking to my strategy and being patient, not trying to go overzealous on some short positions right now. Okay, now we get to talk about AMC and GME, okay? So the thing about AMC here is this is this is bad. This is in a negative trend on all the shorter time frames. I'm, I'm gonna point that out in a moment. But one key thing here is you're still in a positive trend. And weirdly enough, we didn't cross over just yet. Now this could cross over tomorrow. We could get more downside price action and then see that thing pop back up eventually. But in order to pop back up, well, you gotta remain in positive territory. You gotta remain up here. Once you start to get below here, bad things happen, right? Bad things happen, okay? So if this is going to happen in the near future, you gotta remain up here in positive territory, very important. Haven't crossed on the MACD yet, which is kind of interesting. Now let's just go down the line here. The two hour is in negative territory. So that is a bad sign for the two hour. The only thing saving you here is you haven't lost 437. We talked about 437 back when it made that big upward move, right? When it made this big move during this day, we said it's going to fade. The lowest it will most likely fade is 437. And guess what? It goes to 437. So we did well finding our support level there. Now we flag out. We talked about a subtle divergence here on the 30 minute. We'll show you that in a sec, but I just want you to notice the two hour going negative. That is not what you want, okay? But this can flip right back to bullish. We'll just have to see if it's able to turn back up on this MACD. All it has to do is turn back up. It's still close, but as of right now, you have to talk bearish about AMC on the two hour. On the daily, you can still say positive trend, but on the two hour, you just, you can't say that. Okay, so we're gonna go into the 30 minute and show you that divergence up here. And what do we notice? Just kind of flatness of the RSI, slightly down on the MACD over here. So now, usually when I see a signal like this and not necessarily that good on the RSI at the same time, it's a pullback. 
So I was hoping we'd just hold up right here, but we gap down. That's perfectly fine. Come down into it. We haven't lost 437 yet. Very interesting. Now, the only problem with this 30 minute is you got a little bit deep down into negative territory. You got a little bit deep. So you do have a chance for a retest and then that falls again because we could just curl up for a moment and curl right back down. So it's just not looking the best for AMC right now, but maybe it's once AMC is looking the worst and once people don't believe in it, the people who hold will uh, benefit the most. So we'll pay attention. I do know that these short sellers are really hurting right now with how much AMC is being pushed down because most people are willing to hold this stock and the fact that it's going down dramatically, I highly doubt they out of nowhere just decided to uh, sell today. I bet that is some short selling pressure. GameStop, let's do it the same way. Now, GameStop was able to already curl over on its daily MACD. That is one thing, but uh, that means the direction is down for now, but you're in positive territory. So if this curls up, you will see some green, but it's not curling up right now, okay? The daily is in positive territory. And then the other problem here is, and this really isn't the problem, this is kind of the only good thing you can find. And then on the two hour, you have this right here, it's still in negative territory. So both GME and AMC on the two hour are in negative territory, which means if they see more selling, if this crosses over, bad things can happen. Maybe we'll look out for some divergence down here, but you need this to flip back to positive pretty much immediately while you're close to that center line or else you can see a drop. We could drop all the way back down to probably 1379 probably 1379 unless we're able to hold up at 1520. So on the two hour, it's just not looking pretty. I'm still holding. I did not, I only sold the one position that I'm trading back and forth. The other one I'm keeping and then I am holding the stock itself. Now the key thing that is different for GameStop is this right here. The 30 minute is not in negative territory yet. It is not there yet. So this said, you know, don't think that this has to go down just yet. So it'd be interesting to see most likely with that two hour going negative, it is going to push down. Okay. Most likely it is going to keep pushing down here. They're really suppressing it. But what if this doesn't turn down? What if it turns back up? Well, positive territory is right there. So this continues negative, negative price action. But if it can confirm an upward move, that would be a great signal for upside. You notice the last time this happened, we were even in negative territory when it happened. Uh, you notice right here, we got this little buy signal, you know, the buy signals over here, we don't use that, right? In the course, we talk about the three to uh, five reasons to take a trade. This right here is a good one. It's actually a really good one. And what do you notice? Well, the next, uh, I guess, Friday, we buy up right here. This would be a contrarian signal to take a play for upside. It says that the momentum is about to shift up. Boom, we see a big, big move up. And this is when you are in negative territory. So that is difficult to do. Now you're right by it. So if we see a turn up, a cross on this MACD, this is where that real positivity can come in. So just pay attention. Right now the direction is down, but you can turn back up very easily. We'll have to pay attention. We need more price action. Now, a lot of people asking me live, are the insiders selling? How do you know the insiders are selling? What do you, What is the relation between the dollar and the market? Well, when the dollar goes up and the SPY goes up at the same time, that means the insiders are selling. And what did we just notice today on, I think it was a 30 minute chart. We were going through this earlier this morning and we were just saying, well, notice that the SPY right around here, right around 9 a.m. started to bounce back up over time. And what was the dollar doing at the same time? It was bouncing too. So that tells you that's insiders selling. They're most likely selling their bags to retail traders to make them hold it. And now we see it slightly ripped away, you know, uh, according to, you know, NVIDIA insider selling that gets reported. People are going to sell because of that. So it'll be interesting to see what goes on here. But the dollar, the main thing you just do not want to have, and that is a strong bar. It has another hour and a half to complete. But look how close that is to crossing in the positive territories right there. So this is a bad, bad signal. I am aware of that. I just feel like it's all too easy. The dollar crosses up and the spy crosses down and then we get a crash. I just... I don't think it will be that simple. Um, so maybe we do actually see some kind of back off that gets people trapped to the upside and then that's ripped away. That would make more sense to me if I was trying to trick people. But this seems all too easy. If it is this easy, then great. My volatility play will print and I will be very happy. Speaking of volatility, it's printing. Look at that. So the key thing here though on the daily scale is yes, you've crossed up on the MACD. Awesome. 
but you're non positive territory yet. And the main thing is you have to close and be able to hold price or hold the value, right? Hold the reading above the 200 and the 50. That is a key thing. And then the 50 has to cross the 200 to see some kind of crash signal. It has to remain up there. Okay. You notice over here, we tried to cross. And then we came back down and once this bar printed, we said there's going to be a short squeeze and there's a short squeeze. OK, so boom, we curl up. Now, the reason I am paying attention to this a little bit is just because on this short time frame, I know it's a 15 minute, maybe I'll look at a 30 on the 30 minute. This could rotate up. We could see volatility as we wake up this morning because this actually opens up at 3 a.m. or around 3 a.m. So what if we see that volatility come in? The stock market's at lower prices and it forms some kind of divergence before the open and GDP actually has a positive reaction. This is possible. And that's why I'm saying I think this is just way too easy. The volatility curls up on a daily. The dollar is going to curl up on a daily and the spy is going to curl down and we're going to see a dramatic sell off. I, I just think it's too easy. And I hope it is this easy going forward because that would be nice. And I will not have to uh, manage those trades as, as closely. But right now I'm feeling like I really need to manage these trades. And a lot of things have not confirmed more downside just yet. So the main takeaway here is this right here. I think it's XLU. It is utilities. Remember, this was the crash signal. We were looking for that pullback. Now we're seeing a little bit more uh, trappy behavior, a lot harder market to trade in as this signal started. So what do I think goes forward? Well, I need to see more price action. And that's the main takeaway here. If the SPY is really going to sell off dramatically, then why did utilities see this bounce towards the end of the day? And, and is it going to cross on this MACD and go positive? I just need to see a little bit more price action and then I can finally figure out which direction this market is going. And thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Good luck with your trading tomorrow. Make sure to tune in live. And if you would like to learn about these things, grab that course. It's only $100 until uh, Friday. OK, so Friday, I think I keep getting my days mixed up and saying like two days left or something. And, and there's actually three. But Friday, it's going to go up from $100. So grab that if you want to learn. Thank you, guys. Good luck on your trades. Peace out.